This episode of Film Stock Reviews, I'm reviewing episode three, chapter three of Pachinko. Now, episode three starts off where we see Sunya in 1924 cutting kimchi and preparing dinner with her mother. Now, the interesting thing about how this scene is done is that it's edited together with Grandma Sunya in 1989. She's cutting, it's an edit. You know, we see the grandmother Sunya, the younger one. It's insane. And it's so clear how the editing and thoughtfulness went into this show for these, you know, certain things. There's a great scene in the trailer where we see a young teenage Sunya looking up. And as she looks back down, it's the grandmother. Listen, uh, Yoon Young Jang is fantastic in this. And as this show progresses, the story's getting interesting. The story's getting a little, a little bit, bit better. Episode 1 was in our face. Episode 2 was toned down a little bit because we got the introduction of Kohan Su. We learned his backstory. And now episode 3, really, really interesting. Now, in episode 2, Kohan Su did say to Sunya that he was going to leave, but then he'll be back. In this episode, he does come back, much to the happiness and delight of Sunya. She's so happy to see him. She doesn't know what to do. She can't contain herself. So, it's interesting because the pair end up kissing and you know getting together now it's a beautiful scene because it's happening in the rain and it's just mind-blowing it's such a beautiful emotional scene that it's you've never seen it done before now Kohan Su hands over a pocket watch to Sunya and promising to help her learn how to read time and the whole Japanese Korean aspect is really really interesting there's this really good looking Japanese dapper man a Korean young woman who's still starting out and trying to find herself. Now, Sunya has a gift for <laughs> Kohan Su too. She's pregnant. Yeah, he hugs her because he's confident that it'll be a boy. We don't know that yet. We don't know that. If you read the novel, then you know what happened. So, but the thing is, when Sunya mentions marriage to Kohan Su, <sighs> Sunya is very devastated at what Kohan Su says to her. Basically, Kohan Su has a wife and three daughters, and uh, and but it's a, an arranged marriage, and he's not in love. Like, he's in love with Sunya. Now, he promises to buy Sunya a big house with, you know, everything that she can afford. Life's going to be perfect, you know, but it won't include marriage. You can see the face on Sunya. She's just devastated, and it goes to show that you know, her whole life is just what's going to happen now. And it's crazy because it's such an impactful scene where she runs away from Kohan Su and she's just crying and it's raining down and she's running home and she's pregnant. The emotion, oh my God, is so much filled with this scene. It's insane, but it's so, so well done. Now when she gets home, a stranger arrives at the home with a briefcase full of clothes and books. Now we find out this guy is Isak, and he is a Christian coming down from the north and he's tired, he has tuberculosis and he needs to rest up at this house, evidently just finds this house. Sunya over the night while feeling negative and emotional and feeling betrayed by Kohan Su cries during the night. Another emotional scene that is crazy to watch. But she does admit the truth to her mother. She is disapproved and distraught, especially when she learns that there's no chance of marriage to this beautiful man. <laughs> and then in a weird source, Isak, who the guy came in and has this tuberculosis and is a Christian coming from the north, is of course eavesdropping and listening because the walls are so thin in these houses. So for now, Sunya heads down to the docks again and then preparing to get the fer to the ferry boat. She has lunch at a noodle shop with a cheerful Isaka who encourages her to join him. So we know where Isaka's plans are. We know what's happening. We don't know what's going to happen. So Isaka admits that he did hear Sunya tell the mother that she's pregnant and everything. Isak has an idea what to do with the baby, but then Sunya just lashes out. And it's an interesting, interesting thing and then a crazy, crazy thing. Now we go back to the 1980s where a character did pass away. It's a sad moment for the family when, you know, it's just an up and down. This this show is just all over the place with how certain things are going. Now, as Sunya is telling Solomon certain things, the way Sunya said these things to Solomon 
it makes Solomon think of something and a really interesting plan to come up with to get this deal done. Now, the rest of the episode takes place in the 1980s and we find the Solomon, Sunya story, how Solomon's trying to get everything done, but Sunya somehow convinces this woman who doesn't want to sell to sell, and there's a reason behind it. You have to watch the episode to find out what that reasoning is. Now, as the episode is, you know, ending, we go back to the 1920s and one more time, of course, Isak, who, in my opinion, is the most annoying character so far right now, and it's only episode three, suggests that Sunya forget about Kohan Su and instead turn her attention to him instead. Like, way to use a woman's emotions against her and say, hey, this guy's not going to go with you, but let me try and see if I can woo her over. Of course, that's the typical way of how men still work in today's world. Doesn't matter what culture or country you live in. So he wants to do right by the baby and yeah, do right by the baby. And Sunya, we see that nods her head as she accepts the offer. Okay, hold on. Like of all this time that happened with how episode two ended to how episode three started to everything that she went through in this show and episode is insane. Seeing the aspect of how a teen and young Sunya is going through to the way the grandmother and the older version of Sunya is working and it's edited together. It's really weird how two dynamics and how, you know, when you're a teen, you're not really fully mature of what's going on. But then as you grow older, you're more wiser. The older you get, the wiser you get. It's really interesting. This episode was really, really good. I liked it a lot. We see the anguish, we see the emotional aspect that Shunya has gone through in these three episodes. The show is really well written. Some changes from the novel have occurred. You know, if you know those changes, let me know in the comment section below. If you spotted them, I would love to see what you think they are. And if there aren't, Kohan Su is great. This Isak character is in crazy, in a way. Uh, because he's just taking advantage of a woman who's really emotional after losing the love of her life. So, listen. Whew. I mean, eight episode, season one total. So far, so good. Great mix of Korean, Japanese, English. I mean, all three cultures, all three languages. Great to see. Great to see that in a show like this. And for it to be on Apple TV Plus is a huge round of applause. I feel like this show is going to get recognized for its story, its directing, and definitely its acting. And it'll probably get a big slew of awards when it comes award season for the TV and television awards. And I won't be surprised if it, you know, doesn't win. I mean, when it does win, listen, it rightfully deserved it. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about episode 3, chapter 3 of Pachinko. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of it? Where do you see the character of Sunya going now? Especially with Isak, and do you think Kohan Su will return in the future episodes? Let me know in the comment section below about the questions I just asked, and be sure you tune in next week for my episode 4, chapter 4 review of Pachinko. And I'll see you guys in the next review video.